Hi everyone. In today's video, we will dive into connected lookup transformation in Informatica IDMC with a real-time example. If you are new here, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated with more such tutorials. First, let's understand what is lookup transformation. So lookup transformation is used to lookup data in a relational table, flat file or other sources to enrich your data pipeline. Right. So it actually acts as a reference to enhance your incoming data by providing the related information. So it actually enriches your incoming data, right, with the related information. So that's the main purpose of using lookup transformation. For example, imagine you have a sales table with some customer ID, you know, sales details like sales date and sales amount, right? So you have this information and you wanted to enrich it with customer details. You have only customer ID here, right? So you wanted to enrich it with customer details like customer name and country, right? So this is where lookup transformation comes in. So how do you do that then is, so we can use a relational or, or flat file reference as a reference lookup, for example. So let's say, for example, customer table has the customer information. So we wanted this customer name and country to enrich our sales data, right? So in this case, we can use this customer as the lookup source, right? Or lookup table. So our relational lookup table is what we can call it as, right? So this can be in the relational or a flat file even, right? Now we wanted to actually have this uh, as a reference lookup. Then uh, we need some condition to fetch this data, right? So the condition will be, so we need a common column for that, right? So here we can see customer ID is the common column where we will be using that uh, as a condition to actually fetch the customer details, right? So, all right, then now let us see how to actually, you know, fetch that information of, from the lookup reference using the lookup transformation. So then we'll have this enriched data. So, so we, we have the sales information, right? So we wanted this, infer, along with this information, we wanted to enrich it with customer information. And uh, the enriched data, we are gonna write it into a CSV file, into a flat file, which is a CSV file format. So that's the use case we are going to work today. So let's go to lookup transform. Let's go to IDMC first. So login into your IDMC, select data integration service, create a new mapping. You can optionally name your mapping and then we'll configure the source and target. So first let's configure the source. So what's our source? So here we'll call, here our source is sales table, right? Which is in Oracle. So let me select the Oracle connection and source type is single object and I'm going to select the sales table here. This is my sales table. You can optionally preview the data. Yeah, you can see here there are five records in it, right? So this is what we have seen. Now, what we wanted to do, we wanted to enrich this data using a lookup reference table, right? So our lookup reference will be the customer table in the Oracle. So in our case, uh, this customer table or customer reference table is also in the same Oracle DB, but it could be in a different DB as well, different Oracle DB or any other uh, uh, database as well. In that case, it could be any other data source type as well, right? So now let's add lookup lookup transformation, right? So lookup transformation, incoming fields comes from the downstream, that is our source. So it has all these four uh, columns and let's have a lookup object. So it is also present in the same Oracle database. So my lookup object, so you can select the source type as object, lookup object, lookup object is my customer table. and you can preview the data. So this is our lookup table. So where we wanted to actually fetch the customer name and country based on the customer ID match, right? And once it matches, so we wanted to fetch customer name and country, right? So if there are multiple matches, how do you want it to deal with it? So here you can select that. You wanted to, if you wanted to select the first match, then you can select first row. Last match, then last row. You can return any row if you are not sure of it, right? And you can return all rows or you can return the, you can report the error, right? So I'll just say first row. And go to the lookup condition. So as soon as you click on the lookup condition, you will get some error here. See, field name conflicts detected. So
So this is because so we have customer ID here, right? In the sales also, sales table also, that is our source also has the column with customer underscore ID and our lookup preference also has the column with the same name, customer underscore ID. That's the reason it is saying uh, we want, uh, it needs, we need to resolve the field name conflicts, right? So for that, we, we can just, you know, go to the incoming fields and add a, a rule which actually says named fields and then you can rename the customer ID, right? So what we can do here is just select the customer ID here because it's okay. present in uh, our lookup table as well, right? So we wanted to rename it. So we can rename it. So I'll just rename it as select sales underscore customer ID, right? So we'll, I'll just say sales underscore customer ID. See, that conflict has gone now because we had the same uh, column in lookup uh, reference table as well. So we need to resolve that conflict. We are done with that. All right. Now lookup condition is, now we'll go to the lookup condition. What is our lookup condition? So when my customer ID, right? So customer ID in the lookup uh, reference table is equal to what's the incoming field that is from, which is coming from our source, right? So this we renamed this now. So if it equals to sales underscore customer ID, right? So if both matches, then actually fetch the return fields. What are the return fields in the lookup reference table? So these are the lookup fields, right? So we are interested in customer name and country, right? And say, for example, if there is no match, right? So if there is uh, no match, so we had this condition, right? So if it is true, we know we, we are going to get the customer name and country because there was a match. Say, for example, if there, uh, there was no match, right? So for the unmatched records, what should customer name and country return, right? So in that case, uh, we can actually provide the default values. So you see the default column value here, right? So you can just go to options, edit metadata and provide the default uh, column value. So if it doesn't match us, right? So we are not sure what to have the customer name and country. Check, so we can just put it as unknown, something like this, some default value. So it has to be in single quotes as it is where care. All right. So this, this is what we need to do, right? Then go to advanced options. You can see the advanced options here as well. So uh, look up cache enabled. So we can enable the cache so that what happens is uh, the lookup uh, reference table or reference uh, data is cached and uh, on the first uh, execute first uh, record right so one when it actually requests for the lookup cache for the first row itself then it gets cached right and uh, no more uh, lookup no more request uh, goes to the lookup reference table as it is already cached so uh, data integration actually uses that uh, that data the cache data right and you can see there are two types of caches, dynamic lookup cache and lookup source is static. So we can use lookup source, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can mark it as static if uh, you know that your lookup source is not going to change during the session run, right? And if it is going to change frequently, then we can select the dynamic cache. All right, now, and also you can see in the lookup, uh, general so you can see a checkbox here unconnected lookup right so by default it is whenever you select a lookup transformation it is a connected lookup transformation and when you check this right so when you select this checkbox unconnected so it will become the unconnected lookup so unconnected lookup is something like which will not be part of the data pipeline but we can still it is still part of our mapping and we can call it like a function and we'll discuss more on unconnected lookup in the next video. We'll cover that in the next video, okay? For now, so we have configured uh, uh, our customer uh, table as the lookup reference, right? Now, we wanted to write this data into the target. So target will be the flat file. So I'm gonna write this data into flat file, but I don't wanted all this data to be uh, displayed in the flat file, right? So we can exclude some columns. So how do we do that? Let's see, exclude configure and then I just wanted I don't want it to display the customer ID which is coming from the reference table because we already have that in the sales customer ID right and also you know we, we don't want this sales ID 
So I, I'll just exclude it. These are all options. You can even have all the columns as well. I'm just excluding some, some fields so that it looks clear, right? So now I have sales customer ID, uh, sales amount, sales rate, and country and customer name fetched from lookup reference table. All right, now go to the target. So these are the incoming fields I filtered and go to the target. So I'll select flat file object. I'm gonna create a new file. So I'll just select the create new at runtime and we'll provide some name to it. Sales customer dot CSV file. I wanted the format in the CSV, sales underscore customer CSV. So you can see here, we don't have that such file here. Right, so now go to the target fields. As it is a new one, we don't uh, have the target fields and we don't need to map the field mapping, right? So you can just save the mapping, validate it. Yeah, you can see the mapping is valid and just go ahead with run. So make sure your runtime is selected properly. And uh, before that, uh, just uh, double check if your runtime environment, that is your security agent is up and running. All the services are up and running. So in my case, yeah, all the services are up and running. So I can go ahead with the mapping job mapping job execution so i'll just click on run and can track the job here in my jobs so it just few seconds it just takes few seconds to complete the job so it is queued now it is running yeah success see five rows processed so source five rows target five rows right now let's go back and check the output right yeah, we have sales customer dot csv created here so let's see what what's the output here it should have customer information uh, along with the sales information right yeah as you can see here we have the sales sales customer id so we just named renamed it and uh, sales date amount and customer name and country so this was not there earlier if you observe right so this was not there and we got it now right and you can also observe two things here right so if uh, sales id is 101 right so uh, the customer id sorry this is customer id so it's the same customer id 101 right so if because like uh, same customer can actually place uh, multiple orders right so in different uh, so you can see the customer information is same for 101 customer right so the customer name and country is same that's one case and also you can observe so for 105 right customer id 105 so there was no reference for it so if you see this was the customer reference table and uh, there there was no customer with the id 105 this is the reason it didn't find the information for the customer name and country so it actually picks up the default values this is the default values which we have provided right uh, in the lookup transformation so when there is no match, so we wanted to uh, put it the customer name and country as unknown. So that's what we can see it here, right? So this is how you can actually use the lookup transformation to enrich your source data, right? Now you may get a question. So uh, I can even do this with joiner transformation as well, right? So we just had this condition on a common column, which we can even do with the joint transformation, right? So why do I need to use the lookup table? Yep, you are right. On, you can even use the joiner transformation to perform this but you can they, there are some benefits using the lookup transformation right so it is uh, you know you have two things like it is cache based so the lookup uh, will be cache so you have two types of uh, cache static and dynamic is what we discussed right so so as the data is cache so you will get the improved performance right the performance will be improved and uh, you can use uh, and you know you can use this for the smaller tables smaller data sets we can use the lookup tables and you all, you know you can even have the default values so where in joiner transformation you don't have this flexibility right so either if it is a match uh, you know you get the information or uh, you know even if it is unmatched you can use the other join types and you get the information but those will be the uh, you know, it can be nulls or the empty, and it will be null values, right? So, but here you have the flexibility of providing the default values. So, for having the default values and also cache, which actually gives you the 
better performance. So for these two reasons, we can go for the lookup transformation. But remember, you only need to use the lookup transformation when you have the small lookup tables, right? If your lookup tables are only uh, smaller data set, right? Only then you should be going for lookup transformation. Say, for example, if you are if you have you know large data sets with complex join conditions and uh, if you need advanced join types, right? So then you prefer join and transformation. So that's all for this video. So if you this is all about the lookup transformation. So just to recap, right? So let's go back and what did we do here? I'm just recapping in the lookup transformation. So we had the lookup object selected here, right? And lookup condition return and the return fields. That's all right. So here we can configure the default uh, column value. In the advanced, we can say if the lookup cache, we wanted to enable the cache or not, right? So you can even say lookup source is static. So if the if your lookup is uh, not changing during the session, run, right? So this is about the lookup transformation. And uh, uh, what is about the unconnected lookup, we'll see in the next video. So that's all for this video. So if you like the video, please uh, like, subscribe, and uh, subscribe to the channel, right? And uh, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just put it in the comment section. I'll try to respond back. Thanks for watching.